Now this forum shall be bilingual with candidates permitted to uh, communicate in either English or Swahili. But of course I shall give you uh, a chance a bit later on. You, you can speak to your people in the language you prefer. <laughs> candidates uh, shall remain civil and respectful and uh, we, will be, we will not be permitted to insult uh, each other and this goes to everybody, even the audience. We shall not be permitted to use any derogatory language in reference to anybody during this debate or during this forum. And uh, those that are fine, those that are before us, shall not be permitted to, and those who are uh, in the audience, shall not be permitted to use any gestures that may appear to be derogatory or insultive. It is at this point that I want to state that um, Ara ensured that all participants in this debate or forum were communicated to and screened well in advance in order to, to avoid conferring any undue advantage to any candidate. All candidates were invited to this forum. I shall give a chance to all our audience who are watching us both online and here in person to engage with us through the website that's at www.slido.com the code is Homabay. you can engage with us from anywhere that you have and you can see on the screen what is it that needs to be done to make Homabay County great I love the engagement already ladies and gentlemen let us start this debate and I would like to start with uh, this common question, Mr. Makraputi. I'm sure you've heard of it before, but indulge me. Why do you want this seat? And if elected, what are going to be your set targets for Home of the County within the first 100 days in office? You have a chance to give your opening remarks as you respond to the question. Your microphone. Is there next to you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I see there is um, a mic with a knowledge top on the right, a black one. We should have gotten a yellow one for me. <laughs> you know, colors really mean a lot to politicians. So, <coughs> So, good morning, all of you. Good morning. Those who are here and those who are online. Um, my name is Mark Rabudi. I come from Kasipul. Uh, I was born in the forest down there, but lived here in Masego. Uh, before I go on, allow me to just tell you that I have my deputy at the back, a young man from Kanikela, Tiwa. Maybe you can just stand and wait. That's my deputy, Tofi Ouma. And then I also have one of my staffers who get with me. I don't know. Amito, are you? Over there. Um, I thank you, Tara, for organizing this event. And uh, from one set, this is my kind of thing. This is how I do my campaign. I engage. I go to people's homes. I go to town halls. I go to meetings. I don't go road shows, I don't do dancing. You know, in Oman Bay there's been a lot of dancing in the last 10 years. I think let us do other things. Let us engage more meaningfully. You ask me, why do I want to sit and what I want to do in the next 100 days? Um, by training, I'm a sociologist, but I venture into public health. And uh, sociologists tell stories. Um, in my young life, we lived in Saudi Arabia, uh, way back in the late 70s. And uh, every morning, there used to be a steamship that used to come of the sumo over here. It used to be called Kamongo. And we'd come in the morning and we'd do And of course, we'd wake up and go and you know, have fun of seeing people descend back. And uh, later in the afternoon, when it was a Saturday, would go to a small photo shop here 
called Lake of Waters. I don't know if, if you know, it's still there. Uh, and, and Homer Bay was a good place. But time has come, and many things did happen. I myself went out there into the world. I served in the UN, I served in USID, I became country director for Nope Uganda, I became CEO of Private Sector Business Council, and I ventured also in my private business. So it's been good out there, working, supporting. I worked in the coast, I worked in Nigeria, I worked in South Sudan. But what happens when you help other people manage their lives when your own people actually don't enjoy the same things? And because of my experience in planning and my experience in community development, I thought, let me engage back home and see how I can support the county government of Homer Bay to be able to enjoy some of the skills that I have. So in 2013, I applied to become a CC. Of course, the interviews were supposed to be on some Wednesday. And uh, that same Monday, before Wednesday, the governor announced his cabinet. So that took me by a lot of surprise. And I said, let it stay. I went on with my life, supported uh, mainly my constituency. And come 2017, again, the same thing happened. I was drafted as a PS for public service, we were taken to the one. we were interviewed, I was supposed to be sworn in at some point, and then the government lost his seat. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Rapudi, your time is up uh, in terms of responding to that particular question. I would like to move to the next issue, and I would like to ask you, you are not considered as popular as the other candidates that are there, as many residents of former day would perceive. Um, what do you think makes you stand out from your other competitors? Look, history judges me. I've just told you a little bit of my story, that I had the purpose to support the county at the executive level. I decided to move into the next time and now fight for this seat and be in the front line. What puts me apart? I'm a good plan. This county needs plan. I'm a good resource mobilizer. My history can put it. put my competitive form. That is good for this county. I respect people. You call me, I made it on time. I have a major <coughs> commitment from my party to be able to develop this county bottom up. That puts me aside from this other country. That I might not be popular as them, and I told you I also don't do the campaign the way they do it. I do my campaign by social engagement, like what we are having to do. And uh, do you think that that one might, might be of a disadvantage to you? Has it been challenging for you being considered as the less popular of them all? Less popular is on the, what, what people carry, particularly I saw the other day that I was 2.5%, uh, I saw another one at 9%. 11%. Popularity is not the issue. The issue I bring on the table is that one, there's an alternative. We can now choose governors from other parties. Two, I bring in a very neat team that are already put ready to take over government. And so there's nothing that I'm less popular. What I know is that I have my votes and nine of others will determine who is less popular. That's the date we are looking at. Not the people vote. All right. Thank you. Um, I would like to get into the issues now pertaining um, Homer Bay County, um, if we may. And I, I would like to start with uh, water. What are your plans to ensure adequate and reliable water supply in Homer Bay County if elected in office? The first step is to do an executive order to split water into two and have urban 
water and rural water. The problem we have is too much focus on urban water and forgetting rural water. So once they do that, then we can have a two-tier body, one dealing with urban water, that dealing with rural water, and ensure that we have a last mile. Water is not a problem in Norway. We are rivers, we are water here in we are water in the Yukis, and the government has done also some bit of work even through other bodies, NGOs. The problem with water in Norway Bay is the last mile. How does the water reach the household? And then how must the water be safe? That's the problem we have. That's what I'm going to do. How will you ensure that it reaches the people? Distribution. Distribution. That's an enabler that the government can do and put it in the budget. That's something that is in the government side to do, not, not the system. So we put a budget, we make sure that we're able to speak to the water is already there. Now you will meet us uh, to be able to get get the people. Okay. Now still on the, on the same, um, who the county as uh, you know should be at the forefront when it comes to um, economic progress, um, considering its location. And uh, this is through the same water through blue economy. Uh, how do you plan to work on this particular challenge and ensure that the blue economy is uh, uh, fair and improved so that probably is at the forefront? Thank you. You know, in one of the articles that I've written, I proposed that the local government or the county government one with the national government to do a ring road. You know, the ring road that has been on the top for long, 470 kilometers. If that ring road can be done, then we're going to open the blue economy very quickly because that's what's going to open all our beaches. There's a small beach in Sare in Suba South. And if from, we can do it from there, link with what's actually going all the way up to Seaport, we are going to open up the blue economy because this link, is 70% part in Kenya. What is happening right now is uh, cage fishing, and um, I am not for cage fishing. Reason being because it is mechanized, our people cannot have enough resources to cage fishing, and for that reason, I will still want to encourage fishermen to be able to venture. We have to give them gears, give them licenses, and supervision and support. That we must still maintain. I'm aware that uh, I've been criticized for not encouraging uh, not fishing, fish, fish processing plant. No, you only do processing plant if it is enough for the local economy to absorb. Fish is not enough in Kenya, so forget about that as well. We just need to have the fishing done, done well, and we remove the cage fishing and allow our people to go back to the day as usual. I'd like to touch quickly on the issue of health. Also planning in addressing the issue of um, in, in, in improving the health sector of uh, Omega County if elected into office within the first 100 days. The first 100 days I will pay at once. This has been a problem because I have got that problem. So one, I will pay at once. I promise that. Because it's lack of planning that will that problem. Number two, well, it's actually all I as clear that me is to do. I will eventually achieve what I pushed when I wanted to be an executive back then. So that we have primary health and we have medical services. Two different ways. Primary health so that we can have level one and level two actually properly supported to be able to move. Because when we close the tap for sickness and malady, then the hospital does not matter. If we put big hospitals, then what's going to happen is we don't have big real estate, but we have nothing really to provide for it. Because we cannot keep building hospitals when we cannot when we have public health not managed. If we manage our public health very well, whichever side of hospital we have, there's no problem. In Japan, there's a small saying that the bigger the pool, the smaller the hospital. The smaller the pool, the bigger the hospital. What that means. If you can be able to manage people from being sick, that's the truth. You know, vector control, property vaccination, our immunization for children, then we have fewer people being sick and 
therefore we don't need to use those words. So three things. Make sure we pay our workers, remunerate them, keep them at one. Number two, split that case into two, improve public health. Number three, be able to manage engagement so that we have drugs in our, in our stores. All the supply of stores are good enough. If you go to Mwanza here or you go to Tanzania, we don't have big hospitals. I'm not I'm not for big hospitals, I'm for efficient hospitals. And the days that will be right. Yeah. And how how, how do you how do you tend to do that um, in terms of paying the local workers within 100 days? Um, there are reports that uh, uh, I acquired that we have marketing <laughs> price every eighth day of every month. We have strikes from health workers. How, how do you tend to achieve that in 100 days, considering that we have had past health facilities? You know, every, every day you need to negotiate. Uh, I happen to have been in a panel that uh, reviewed uh, cancer engagement with the NGO for the time and time it was uh, every day can be renegotiated. We have a plan and be able to plan it without necessarily uh, having our stockouts. So to me, negotiating the debt is where to start from. We started so that we start and adopt it. Okay. You believe that's sustainable? It is sustainable because what you do first is to make sure that you don't have the supply. You pay for the benefit, the supply that comes for that particular year, and you do what is being called to cancer as a debt that you want now to structure. Now, um, I want to be particular, and I'll talk about the Homabe County Health, uh, uh, Homabe County Teaching and, and Referral Hospital. I'm looking at this particular hospital, and uh, we have the Homer Bay County Health Service Committee uh, that came up with uh, a report. And uh, I do not know if you um, bumped into this report that was released. Um, in Homer Bay County, I, in Homer Bay County teaching and referral of hospital, there are so many issues that are affecting this particular hospital. And I looked at the number, they were 30 issues. Let me just mention five. Let me know how you're going to address this. One, there are no drugs at the pharmacy, and all patients always get directed to buy drugs to the nearest pharmacies outside the facility. And of course, this one includes, it includes very simple common drugs like Painkillers, panadol. Two, there are very dirty and old linen that were last delivered to the facility in the year 2018. To date. Three, some patients share beds which are very dirty and small in size. Four, we have very dirty toilets in the wards. And that's what I expected for a health facility. Be that toilets that are supposed to be used by outpatients in the outpatient department were closed. Five be the final point, because there are so many. Mothers at the maternity who are under the national government program of Linda Mama yet uh, uh, they, they, were, they were compelled to buy all the crucial items outside the facility and were still being billed as having benefited from the program. How do you tend to address the issue of former day county teaching and referral hospital? I cannot go on and on because there's so many issues there. Ken, you, you're aware that we had a referral stores in this country. And the, the, the blue page is the same. One, we will do manage the board and set up a directorate to manage that was called purely as an enterprise. That's the best way to go. I'm a businessman and that's how I think. The moment we put it that way out, then we don't have problems. Number one, to address the issue of mismanagement of resources to go to that hospital, we must avoid 
you know, people having direct interest in medical company. You see, if you have an interest in pharmacy that is next to the hospital, then definitely you ask people to go in there. So first of is to have that letter, number one. And then drugs just will be left there. Some of those drugs that you go and buy out there actually are from there. Most of them. And you you you, you track drugs, it's very important for us to be able to cut that cartel. Number two, there is talking. There is a lot of people in this country. I remember when this first government was formed in 2013, one NGO employed 200 nurses for all of it. And so this is something that is still very important from group partnership to actually stop that was called get new beds, get everything. Do you? you see, toilets are closed because there's no water. So when we address one problem, then we address that particular problem uh, as, as we do. But this should be a mama. You know very well that uh, uh, the pilot for IC was actually also to be done in COVID. But the commitment that the government put then was not commensurate to be able to have that cost. It was taken with so much money. And you've seen what has happened at the start of that. So I intend to set up a fresh management, complete with a CEO, have that organization managed away from the way we do so that give their own money and they'll be able to run a private wing and be able to run the public side. If women have problems, particularly giving birth in this hospital, then we can be able to look at how to improve other support facilities so that we have business and have then we have other sports. So that the pressure over here can be because I don't see why we should have people sharing beds and yet there are also some county hospitals that can also be proved so that that inflow to the far hospital is is stable. To me, is managing the system, being efficient, killing that cartel for, for drugs and managing inter government relations between us and cancer between us and the Ministry of Health and then all will be well. On Slidos, there's a question. How will you improve and, and encourage sexual reproductive health uh, rights of young people and the poor implementation of police on uh, youth health? That's a question on Slidos. Uh, policies. Problem. That is? Policies. Policies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the implementation of policies of youth health. Yes. Other such uh, issues for young people, and particularly AGW, adolescent girls and young women, uh, is something that is called uh, close to my heart. Uh, you know, we've had problems with the county assembly because of a bad relationship between the executive and the county assembly. If we want to improve <coughs> services for young people, particularly on other issues, we must start by setting up things within the assembly, and with that improved relationship, then we can have that uh, ascended to, and then we can push on this budget to be able to support RH issues, particularly at, uh, at, at, at the whole thing. You know very well that because of that, that's why we've had several problems with the bill and on, on the GBB bill has not come out, uh, public participation bill has not come out. So if you improve that with the government relations, then we can be able to do this and bring a bill that will guarantee division of uh, revenue from the county exchequer to be able to support uh, adolescents, girls, and young women, and particularly on the HR uh, issue, uh, sexual development health issues. We also need to deal with the social mobilization uh, aspects because uh, reproductive health, particularly in this part of the town, part of the country, is still much taboo. We need to look at how we can open up that so that we can take issues to early married, you know, teenage pregnancy and be able to develop our youth a bit more effectively uh, through RH programs. That also. We can also work with NGOs. NGOs uh, across this uh, region support sexual health health issues. Um, there are uh, issues even uh, to do with the family plan. Uh, these are things which can be introduced in our programs, our community programs, and uh, if supported by our government, government is not supposed to provide that, but we need to provide an enabling environment 
set up the policies that are trying to Right. And uh, you, you mentioned teenage pregnancies there, right? and uh, maybe just touch on that. Um, what about in regards to having rescue centers in uh, Omadi? We, we, we do not have... Uh, yeah. If, if you look at my manifesto, we are discouraged rescue centers. Uh, my, my, my main agenda is to see how we do an integrated program where we are able to settle Abuse who are pregnant or who are born to any persecution or maybe at the GBV uh, to families so that uh, we don't have rescue centers. Uh, rescue centers animate young people, and uh, within those rescue centers, the father go through abuses and so on. If you look at my manifesto, that is the other way up so that we can be able to settle the people in foster families rather than rescue centers. I'm known for rescue centers. Right. So you, you, you prefer foster homes yes. as opposed to rescue centers. Yes. And is that achievable? Um, and how long do you think that will be done? In it's achievable the because uh, rescue centers uh, become expensive uh, to manage. Uh, they can also be run down, and we don't have a, a budget for that. But in homes, it's easier for us to build the capacity of uh, foster parents and. Uh, they could be close relatives or somebody like that. And this is where the society has been now about all along. I mean, it's sustainable. And, and, and what about children's homes? Again, mm. if you look at <laughs> my Facebook, I'm not for children's homes. Yes. I believe that children should be supported within the foster families. The wider society should be able to accept children, to be able to live with them, mm. and be supported there. Again, in, a, in, in, in much of my advocacy, I don't like children. Um, I would like to move to yet one other aspect of this is in regards to education. What are your plans in regards to this particular sector and realizing that the education sector of Mongolia County is improved? And uh, how do you intend to bring a synchrony of all regions in Mongolia County? You know, the aspect of the field that is involved with the CD, uh, unfortunately, I think it's until this year, uh, sometime this year, March, that uh, the federal government said they are going to confirm the teachers. Uh, I don't know whether they confirm them or not, but you look at for 10 years, they have been working on contracts. So, number one, make sure that all ECD teachers are permanent and pensioned. When we do that, we have a good foundation for our children. The foundation that I got, that's what got me where I am. Not where I am without my foundation. Number two, let us build them schools. It's important for us to support the infrastructure. Children learning in poor, dated backgrounds, it's not, not good. If you go to other counties, they have already done that, cleaned out of it. So that's something that we must do immediately. If we cannot support ourselves, let us move forward. PPP arrangement to be able to do that because with PPP we can get one school supported by maybe a private sector or maybe an NGO and then we can be asked to. But we we'll look at the county uh, budget because there is. Remember, for this region, education is a cash problem. What about um, the release of bursaries? We've been having this issue of uh, inconsistencies on bursaries. Um, how fully in charge are you going to be when it comes to this issue and ensuring that we have consistency when it comes to its release and it is, uh, we, we don't have any corrupt dealings? The, the day I came to present my papers at IBC and I went to the Fund Assembly to pay a cash call to the plan, he raised that issue with me. He said, first of my like he, when it comes to distribution, it only goes to the preferred. And uh, why is that possible? Because there's very little public participation in issues to do with this country. Because they didn't have a public participation bill. They didn't have it. It has never been passed. In fact, it was added recently. Uh, to, so everything they've done is illegal. So if we have a proper public participation in anything we do, 
and we take this person, we will be able to identify the needy student and we will be able to provide this money. This money is there, except it goes to the Romans and maybe people who are connected and so on. Releasing money is also a problem between the executive and the assembly. Because once the budget has been drafted, it goes to the assembly. But, you know, that budget takes time. And uh, it's also bad relations. One of the things I want to work very hard is a proper discussion between my government and the other government, which is the legislature. So we have this processes of assembly pushed very quickly and smoothly that we have enough money to do these things so that we can be able to pay bursaries in time to the needy who have been identified through a public participation process in this country. Uh, there is um, okay, okay. There is um, a concern by one of our, uh, of, of our um, residents here concerning Homer Bay that there are some regions that do not have um, good outreach when it comes to education, especially the island regions. How do you intend to work on that? You know, uh, I said earlier that I did this first. One of my classmates did not use not go for our time. Yeah. And I used to ask myself, oh, what's wrong? He said, we come from Orlando. We we'll give it three days. By the time we leave the whole week, they are studying from and back. Uh, one trip alone, the three days will be over. And uh, this is how we improve education, those islands. Number one, let us make those islands accessible. And uh, improving accessibility by allowing private sector to have can now actually go to Bita and go to Fernando through the water park. And if we build schools, then we can have proper traffic around those islands and be able to have children actually go to school, maybe in the mainland or even in the island. I think education, support, teachers should be a priority. But you see, those are functions which are not within our, our jurisdiction. So if we partner with the national government very well, then we can improve learning by building schools. We can ask them how to bring the teachers, we do the ECT there. But if there are other aspects that we can support to have better transportation to the mainland, then people can come out here and be able to uh, go to school better. What is the plan in regards to increasing investment opportunities in Hawaii County? Hawaii is not ready for investment. And I know why do you think so? This is a story that we have grappled with uh, most of the people that I speak with. Because an investor, the real story of this hotel, uh, speaking with the manager, tells me he buys water for about 250,000 uh, in a shilling to run this hotel. Which investor will come to a place when they have to buy water at expensive rate. Which investor will come to a place when you find that water is mixed with sewage? Which investor will come to a place when we don't have economic roads? What we have now are service roads, and much of it is used uh, all the can. So there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do about it. Should we give up on, on no. our own account? We need to make Homer Bay ready for investment. First of all, the uh, economic, how, how can we do the economic growth? This is this. Yeah, number one, two economic growth that would be entirely towards you. Then that is an economic form. Number two, invest uh, very much on the people who are down there. Invest in them. Okay? And I don't like uh, giving free money. We do uh, uh, we do we do business venture that supports and you know government can provide a neighboring environment, making sure that there is uh, licenses that are easily accessible, it's easy to register business over here. We try to lower uh, uh, our, 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 our payments to, to, so that the business people improve, improve on our uh, local revenue and reinvest it. Right now, we go to EC, have a higher revenue, uh, local revenue then they have a higher markup when it comes to the national treasury. So if we do that, prove our roads, prove our access, prove water, prove our health, then investors will come.
So it's achievable. It's actually very good. Yet you say that you know, it's not ready for investment. Now we are not ready for investment. That's why you don't see this happen. When we can get it, when I tell power, food. <laughs> We have um, our factories in Homa Dairy. I'd like to give a chance to address that because, um, for example, cotton, it uh, cotton growing died, and as uh, expressed by one of our uh, 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 you know commentators online, they said that uh, it used to be so good, it died. I'm looking at what happened last week when you had the National Agricultural and uh, Rural Inclusive Growth Project, which dispersed 73.9 million financial income farmers in Homa Bay to increase productivity in poultry, dairy, banana, and cotton farming sectors. What will you do if you get elected into office to improve? instead of production, you know what I mean, you can't these particular areas and more. You know, agriculture is important. One of the things we want to do is to improve food production as well. Um, you know, factories like Goyo and Abu Squat, the Shukari Kaspi, they were, uh, all you need to do is just support them to be able to have a good infrastructure. A private sector, in your own local is a blessing because it is employment and can be able to bring in some very different economy. So for me, that industry is very good, but they cannot operate on the vegetarian roads. So that's what we support. Uh, uh, for farmers, our farmers are ready. Land we have is productive. What we need is incentives to the farmers to be able to produce more. Whether it is uh, producing banana, potatoes, cotton, was a major thing here when I was young. Now it's only the stages where those cotton is not still pamper becomes a stage uh, rather than a specific thing. But you know very well that uh, that was a, a bigger economic repression that happened and uh, cotton uh, became uh, problematic. It is not going to survive again. But I like uh, uh, providing uh, advice this way. Let us be investor friendly. Let us be partnership friendly. So that organizations, NGOs, uh, private sector organizations can come and be able to invest in our people. Wow, by making sure that we have access to those farms, to roads, make sure that farmers are healthy, do an enabling environment because health and enabling factor, make sure that farmers have low uh, when we get subsidies, it's good enough so that the cost of production is kept low. That way, I think we are going to move forward. Mr. Rudy, um, I'd like to, to know what is your take in uh, regards to the establishment of most municipal boards and other governance structures up to the village level as provided for in the Urban Areas and Cities Act. Exactly. I think you know that that was made in this assembly. Municipal boards are good because that is how we are going to split uh, responsibilities for supervision. I told you earlier that I'm interested in setting up barrels in the municipalities to manage garbage, to, to do management of, of those places. To me, that's actually the truth solution to be able to take resources and functions and services to the people so that they manage themselves. I would like to see uh, the municipality that I come from in the UBS so that we can make decisions on our own, sit in those boards and manage ourselves. So that the government in Obabe becomes an under and neighboring uh, functions to be able to those boards to work. Well. That's the true definition of population. Okay. But you don't have a municipal board in Obabe to be? Obabe, Obabe as a municipality, you know, the changes that, that came, as a result of that, we have not enacted any laws uh, in May, so it's not bad. Are you, aware, are you aware of the challenges that came up when it comes to the establishment of um, municipal boards in Hong Kong? Because of lack of the people, that there's no policy. 
I'm going to go to two areas and then after I touch on these areas and give a chance to the audience to ask questions. The first area is in regards to, this, to security in Omabe. How will you ensure that you, we have uh, um, peace in the county? Before this election, during the election, and after. If elected, what will you do to make sure that Omabe is safe? No, uh, election bring these challenges to security. For me, I've been a very peaceful campaigner. I told you how I campaign. I don't call people's names, that's all. Uh, and I believe this election will be very peaceful. And so far, it's been very uh, I did a few things. What happened yesterday to my supporters in the uh, Nanyela area, I did a report. Uh, but you know, the county that sits in the security uh, committee for the county. As long as we have a good work relationship with the national government, with the county commissioner, we can have uh, specific uh, uh, forums where we be able to address security issues through community policy, and we have our people also all the way down into the villages to be able to support the government. We are be very lucky if you compare ourselves with counties like Farigo, they have made another level of security. But for us here, we have little, little problems here that we can actually deal with as a result of organizing ourselves through Bakumi. And that is something that the government, the national government actually has been pushing for. And we can embrace it and also support our counterparts on the other side to be able to have this place. Moving forward after elections, I don't think elections will do. There will be violence after elections. This election will be one once. And you know where I stand. We don't want much yet. I just want us to win. Whoever wins, wins. And then that is it. If I'm the one who wins, fine. If the other side wins, fine. We don't want shit. After that, we just join the government to be able to work. Those who want to join me, after we take over the government, fine. No much. <laughs> okay. Um access to resources. That can support you. The women fund, the youth fund will make sure that all these linkages are developed so that our young people can be able to move forward. Personal disabilities? Personal disabilities uh, will, again, I told you about the 5%, we'll make sure I told this one in the cabinet uh, is from a bond, his name is not there. It's already uh, nominated in my cabinet. If, if I'm just waiting to take the ball, if I win, and be able to have it. So, as a result of that, you know very well that um, uh, the, 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 the plans uh, under the Act, the Disability Act, uh, are some requirements that we are willing to buy. The only thing that we need to push that through the same quickly to be able to have it done. And I said earlier that my interest is to work very closely with the same thing because anything that I do outside the law might be considered non void. So we make sure that we push that fast. So you believe you're going to create employment for the youth? Not a bit enough employment for you. Because the youth are at the bottom of the pyramid. At the DOP, that's where we are. That's why we are bottom up. There is a, 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 a question here. How do you deal with the, the issue of post workers in Homabe? Because someone sits in Kisumu, but at the end of the month, he goes to the ATM and collects Homabe money. 100 days in office, we will not send them back in. They will not go on. People's wives, people's girlfriends, they put in appointments, we we'll make sure that they're cleaned out. We we'll do an audit and make sure we have a lead. I told you that in the revenue section, we are collecting 150 million using 600,000. You can just see where the gold bankers are. There is where we start from. Let me go to Slido on uh, my screen there. Paying nurses in time to avoid striking. How are you going to help youths through their youth fund money? You mentioned the youth fund. Would you like to address that? Yes. The, the youth fund uh, was uh, meant to support youth in entrepreneurship. But you see, not all youth are in entrepreneurs. Okay? So we need to segment youth into different aspects. There are youth who are in entrepreneurship, yes. But they are youth who want to go to school. They are youth who want to uh, develop their own skills. 
they used to want to go to other aspects of patient. That is how to use the, the youth fund. And uh, avoid thinking that all youth are good business. To me, that's how I'm going to go about the youth do that fund. Right. Uh, I'm looking at. Uh... Uh, we have uh, someone saying we need to ensure prudent use of public funds and to ensure that competent personnel holds position based on meritocracy. Water sectors should be up to standards and sewage, uh, sewage street, uh, treatment plans be functional. Um, yes, you mentioned that, that issue of uh, employment by merit. Um, and you're going to handle that. Is there anything? How many? How long? Yes. In, in, uh, again, I told that I'm a victim of uh, uh, twice being taken through a very straightforward process through the public service board and then announcement is made on the other way. I will make sure that the public service board is the only body mandated by law to employ, manage, count human resources so that we don't have all this much business that goes on uh, within the county. Okay. Uh, as uh, I load the other part of uh, of uh, Slido, let me get one more comment here. Yes, this is by Samuel again. Anasema, what's the plan to ensure disaster pre preparedness, mitigation, and response referring to the pertinent disaster floods, drought, road accidents, and uh, water accidents? Yeah, the first thing is to to institute an early warning system, which is not very yes. For floods, we know exactly which years they are going to come. And there are staff and departments responsible for that, plus the support of the national government. So an early warning system is the best place to start. Make sure that it is ready, it is resourced, and so that we are able to predict and know how to move our people when floods come, when droughts hit and we don't have fire, so, but you see fires that are happening there on the way. They are not disaster. They are no fire. It's going to happen. Nobody, nobody dies. Only books are bad. <laughs> only, only books and files and papers, particularly financial files, get burnt. How? So, in our city here, you see the market was burnt, burnt down to push people away to restructure the. the those are things we need to. But of course. I know that uh, uh, a deputy governor for the current government went abroad. I asked him where the engines are, uh, uh, and then we, we will see. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I come to the audience, and uh, I'm going to give you, to give each one of you time to, to, to ask a question, and uh, I'd like to urge us all that you keep your questions direct and straight to the point. Let's do this display. 
among the county staff. Yeah. Well, just make sure they know what's going on there. That's our only problem. And then they feel that's where you are starting on a clean slate for the implementation of your manifesto again, okay, if, if you give it the mandate. All right, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. One question. I'm going to only give you three opportunities. <coughs> only three. So one, two, three. Let me start with you because you are ready. Yes, sir, you must. Thank you very much. One, two. Thank you very much. I'm Michael Pitch. I work for the water company, so I represent the water center. First, you mentioned that uh, there is too much concentration in uh, urban water. And you learn the rural water. I don't know if you're aware what percentage of work is rural and what is urban. Number two, the water companies are extremely underfunded. For example, um, <coughs> let me see the development authority, for example, get 600 million per year in terms of the current expenditure. The water companies depend on the goodwill and the sympathy of the state government. So I don't know what you're going to do in terms of legislation and quote-unquote goodwill to support distribution of water. Uh, finally, uh, you mentioned exactly what I'm going to uh, Are we looking at an authoritarian leader? <coughs> or you didn't mention putting the legislation through the assembly or the main process. You say, I'll do an executive order, I'll do an executive order, and number three, I'll do an executive order. So, and, uh, Thank you very much for endorsing the women candidates. Uh, you mentioned when well, talk talking about uh, our women candidates. We appreciate that so much. Thank you very much. First, uh, I'm Philip Osego. Uh, I'm one of the teachers within our town. So, first of all, I thank you very much for having responded to the mission education. Uh, I've heard you talking about uh, what you are going to do, and you are really, you have narrowed uh, your work to the ECD teachers. And you have said you are going to ensure that they are permanent and impressionable. That's good. Now, my question is I think you know, and it's flamboyant, that uh, uh, CBC, CBC, that is the new curriculum is really uh, becoming a puzzle to most of the parents and also other implementers like teachers. As the governor don't take the office, kindly tell us, because we now have a problem and big challenge on implementation material. For example, learning and teaching materials is a problem. Parents also complain that they're supposed to get involved in this as this curriculum requires, but they cannot. Why? Because they, first of all, they, uh, most of them are illiterate. Second, they are saying that this curriculum is expensive and tedious. So as the governor, what do you have in place uh, to help the parents and also the implementers actually do it, uh, do it to it that this curriculum is, is implemented? Thank you. Uh, let me come to you. And uh, because of gender, let, let me take those three parts. Because I'm a 50 year old, 54 year old man. I can't come with all those questions. <laughs> Let me give you a pen to write them down, so I will take those three quickly and then we... By the way, I have energy in Nairobi in the evening, but I'm not going. So I'm here with you guys. I think the others are not coming, so there's no hurry. <laughs> Let us have a discussion. Let us agree this is how we will plan our family. Let me start with the gentleman. <clears throat> I respected this place very much. So I got a late flight at Lade Sumum and I could come here. So in the morning, I took my ride here and I was here uh, 10 minutes to 8.30. And exactly two minutes to 8.30, I called the CEO. He interchanged his phone. I told him about that. So I respect appointments. I respect appointments. Uh, number two, uh, how do you ensure that uh, we do transparent things? If we 
quality to our vision, then they will have um, uh, the, 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 the audacity to be able to put their hands in the public forms. But if we appoint people in the correct way, with integrity, then we have people we can call to be accountable for the resources we have. In management, I was told that you need to expect what to expect. So I will not be an armchair governor. I know management. I know how to check the bottom line. I know how to do a VRL. I know how to do that expeditions. I've been an implementer myself. So I will not sit somewhere and go and inspect a water project that the source of the water is a poser. I will know. So I will make sure that we have properly vetted staff and we know their resources. I will start by giving my own public wealth declaration and everybody else so that we see after five years and my staff come out of that region or have they genuinely earned what them? Money is made here in our bit. I'll make sure my people earn money. Don't pay. On the issue of uh, uh you see now I've forgotten, I've never remembered the teacher teacher whatever. On the issue of water, just a minute, on the issue of water, you know, you know, what of the eighty percent is good. Just an eighty percent is happened. But if those happens really pay me better. You see? But if you look at our neighboring counties, and I'm, I'm, I, I do a lot of benchmarking on my own, I go to Katomega, I go to PC. 70% is urban. 70% is urban? Yes. 70%. Yes, sir. I, 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 I would like us to allow him to answer the question. Yes. Okay. Um, once you've asked your question, allow him to respond to that question. Whether he responds in the right way or wrong way, it is the reason I say. To me, Homabe County is a rural county. What we consider here is urban. <clears throat> These are not the kind of urban. Urban that doesn't have planning, urban that doesn't have uh, proper management, but to me, these are very rural county. And for a rural county, we need to improve rural work services as a matter of urgency. Whichever way we do it, we we'll look through the cabinet and see what we can do. You talked about uh, me coming with, uh, with uh, what's called executive orders. Let me tell you why the benefit of executive order and why. Because in 100 days, you cannot move certain bills within the, the county government uh, of Obama. And the reason being because bills need to go through various stages before they become law, so that was sent to them. But through the certain order, you can't have some things moving forward. For example, we want to appoint two ministers. You don't want to wait for the assembly. That is now when you use executive orders and split the ministry to two. You understand why I want to go to the executive order? They are thinking you are urgent. They cannot wait for the assembly. On the issue of teachers, will you please separate what is the national government? Our mandate here is very small at the lower level, at the ECD. That's what I want to really focus on and make sure that our ECD teachers are properly resourced. They are classes. If you go to Tarakaniti, for example, or maybe to Yaga, you will see their, their children studying in very beautiful, neat environment. As I they may not have all the electricity, but I would like to have every school have their ECD class so that their teacher properly paid on time so that the teacher can come. Because if my child is not taught how to write properly, to speak properly, to do uh, numerical properly, then we have a problem moving forward. So, uh, the other element of CBC is a big debate, my brother. And the Council of Governors probably would have a voice. But to say this is a national issue, uh, I myself support CBC, uh, although I don't have young children anymore. All my children are pro programmed. But I feel that competency is a requirement in the world we have today because we have got technology and therefore we need to learn in a way that it supports where we are best at, not what everybody else thinks we are best at. So I support CBC, but at the county, the only limit we must go is up to students and take the chair, and then we support one more. Thank you.
Now let's move to the last set of questions and then we wrap it up. I'll come to you. Uh, because of gender, as I mentioned earlier on, my I'll come to you and then I'll come to you and family. All of us are not able to ask all our questions and we allow our money. Thank you. Thank you, Moderator, and uh, Google. Uh, colleagues, uh, what I wanted to say is that we need to have some level of patience. Because I was here right on time. And, and uh, uh, he was able to be patient enough to wait for others. Uh, see, it was a lot. 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 Sorry, like Mother Chamba, when you were talking about the ghost workers, I was happy man that you began your speech and uh, at the middle there, you disappointed me when you were talking about ghost workers. You were able to say to loud that the boyfriends and the wives, uh, you are forgetting that even, I mean, the girlfriends and the wives, you are forgetting that even the boyfriends and husbands are favored in the county assembly. So, meaning you are not looking at the women in the angle that you are telling us. Uh, let me put my question. Thank you. Uh, on those workers, Moshinewa, we have those who have been fraudulently employed in the county, county government. We have those who are incompetent. They have no legal qualifications, that, but they are working in the assembly, as well as those who are there but are still earning, in, I mean, earning salaries in our county assembly. Kindly tell us how you are going to look at it. Finally, as I bring it to you, finally, uh, there is something that is wrong in our health worker system. Promotion is something that is supposed to be given, could be on a three-year basis. Today, they are put to be making applications, and they fail to be promoted without any kind of reason. They are not told why they fail to make to get promotions. Can't allow us to understand how we are going to tackle them. Again, let's take to answering, to asking the question, and I came to this side because there are no hands from this side. So, I will come to her and then finish with you. Okay, thank you. My name is Steve Masipoboka. I'm a youth champion of Section Productive Health. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a youth champion of Section Productive Health. Are you aware that there is a policy that is start a zero state in Goma Bay County that will help us to address the issues of young people. Legally, when the way is leading in most cases as the sub-county, making Goma Bay to be painted blue and black. Then secondly, I know there is a youth parliament forum that was funded by, awarded by AMRE, and what will your government allocate to, pro to promote the project that is going around the eight sub-counties? And GDP is coming so high in Kumabi, mostly now during this politics. The policy was there, the donors supported the policy still at the cabinet assembly. It has not been approved. What is the way to make Kumabi a white place? Thank you very much. something I wanted to comment on before I start. I requested that you take note of our questions so that you don't, you don't have to harass us to hold on because of your inability to remember. One, Bay County is uh, a region where people and uh, suffering as a result of our leaders not being in touch with us. And you are a true example of why. Why do I say so? Most of the questions as they are rephrased, you say, we will look into that, we will see, and then we will handle that. It is very evident in your responses that you are not in touch with the residents, and so the facts, the ground are not with you. How are you going to address that? That is bad. Question number two, you already have a cabinet in place and we are talking about human resource management. 
where we want things done the right way, interviews conducted by the Public Service Board, and these positions awarded on merit. You already have a cabinet in place, you have mentioned that. Good question. How you are going to do your human resource management? My question number three is about the political ally. We cannot turn our eyes blind on this fact that you are running on a UDA ticket. And uh, probably County have one of our own that has come down to explain to us the political ambitions. And we have a political party that is dominating in the area that has always stood with us as a county. Now we want you to come out clear and explain to us what intentions that UDA has for us as a county because this is a gubernatorial candidate debate. We cannot keep our eyes blind on that. Okay. And finally, my last question. Can we just uh, stop harassing you, brother? Let me just ask you. Because, because we are giving some time. Then. Oh, please. Yes, I'm requesting for. I, I, I've given three. So I'll only give the, right, the last one. Okay. You know, you want to speak about that. Uh, I, I, I forget something. Uh, okay. The last one uh, is about uh, uh, the public-private partnerships. Now, you know that uh, leaders like you are opinion holders in the society. And uh, despite the fact that you did not get a chance to serve in the ending and regime, you had a position to influence some of, some of these decisions, including the public-private partnerships. As a private person in your own mandate, what did you do to ensure that the residents of Homer Bay get these goodies that come with public-private partnerships? Um, so this is, this is what, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give you a chance to respond to those questions. And then I'll come back to you for another round. Is that okay? Yes. Is that good? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. I think the issue of those workers will get there. Then we did. The interest is that. Uh, Yes, that is Health worker promotion. Uh, you know, promotion has got uh, when you promote someone, then there are subsequent uh, things we do they do, including remuneration and new packages, new assignment, task shifting. We need to look into that. So you you see the government a bit reluctant on promoting. The only they have done that is very obvious because of lack of resources. And when I started, I said, we look at how to benefit on the efficiencies of the new government to be able to set aside money to pay our health workers. When you do that, then you can have a, a, a plan to be able to promote based on how you work the fast uh, strategic plan. Because, <clears throat> because of changing times, you, can't, you cannot uh, keep people also because the, the cost of living changes very fast. You can't keep people in one position. So because of it, uh, efficiencies, we are going to take the efficiencies, we are going to grow resources to be able to help manage promotions and so on and so forth. Pabuka uh, Masi. Policies start at the same time. Uh, all these policies you have mentioned, I appreciate. I am aware that they are all start at the same time because of bad intergovernmental positions. One of the things I want to do is to manage our relationship with our LCS so that it's not frozen. So that bills and policies are pushed in good time. What has happened is where you exchange uh, royalties with cash so that the LCS will build. Most of the things that the government have done, and I'm not talking about government, I mean the kind of going government, is to hurry plans that NCS are not properly involved. And when they go to the same list, that is when the policies get stuck. 
because they live through that and they don't see what is it in them. Right? And so for that reason, it's very important to do that. If we can fast very well, then we can be able to have the food disease. <coughs> for these ones, I can't do any exact order because uh, uh, these are services that are provided for uh, within the CNEP and therefore you can only put resources on them and support them if they become they are properly before the assembly. We'll try to negotiate, you know, try to see how we can win uh, MCAs on, on our side. It's not that there's a uh, margin of powers, we still have separation of powers, but I think I, I will be a governor that's approachable. I'll walk to the assembly and give my speeches because the law only allows that we can do it once. But I feel in every city, every time they convene, I can't go there and be able to do my baby. And in that way, some of these things can come up. Because they might not understand why it is important to push the GBVP or the GBV policy. Because look at what's happening in Peru. Look at what's happening in, in some of the places, in part of the And Peru particularly is a big problem. And that we, we, we can work on as soon as we can. The reason why I use the word we will, we will. It's not that I'm out of touch with things. But remember, we need to be on that seat first to be able to. So I'm talking in that situation that we can be able to work very well with the MCS. Uh, we have 32 of them who are UDA. And that's why sometimes people say, oh, you need to have all you are. If we can be able to get a few of us there as a become governor, I can be able to win over because for the sake of the country. On the issue of um, leadership being not in touch, well, give me any statistics you want me to interpret for you. I will do it. Don't think I, I can. There is an issue around um, uh, politics. You know, don't think I'm not running on DM. I'm running on DM in very team. Part of 2017, go to the internet, you see. And uh, I learned that um, party does not help. Good manager, no more make sure we have water. Good manager, no more we have services for, for farmers. A good manager, no more will pay workers on time, and then we avoid strikes by, 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 by. On the issue of PPP, uh, again, I provided my services directly to the county government, or no more Again, go to the internet, it doesn't lie. Type my name, type again this county government, and you'll see what I've done. Select them. Thank you very much. Um, I want to come to the last final round because I gave an opportunity to answer. Let me allow others who have not talked to say a word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. Thank you. Uh, one and one. I want to just ask you once more you know, that based on uh, observation that uh, we don't have we don't have the sources the late that we tap into the management <coughs> and we thought that uh, we also look into the idea of how we can actually produce more fish and have industries. Yet in you know, all months we are seeing that we are opposed to fish gauging and other activities that go on about fishing. I don't know how the natural kind of fishing will boost our economy in all of the county, unless we have done more research. Like that, straight to the question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Incoming Governor, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, My name is uh, Anthony Samonyango. I'm a small business person in Bongsi. Uh, specifically, I do uh, the <coughs> garbage collection. Um, garbage, as far as I'm concerned, has been uh, a lost and forgotten uh, sector, especially the youth who do it in particular. I've never been used to uh, have ever been uh, handled in town. Um, help us understand, please, Mr. Governor, you Governor, how you uh, Incorporate number one, the youth garbage collection. <coughs> number two, um, how will we now get Homer to a point where we do not see 
indictments from the from the group and the because that is the trend today. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I have some questions. What are the challenges uh, facing the fishermen and the uh, water transport uh, in Lake Victoria around the Sea uh, with regards to uh, fish catching by wind to be farm? Are you aware of what is happening there as the incoming government? Secondly, uh, what is the amount allocated uh, in the financial year 2022-2023 uh, from equitable share of national revenue than uh, another one. How much has been allocated uh, for this financial year for health? Then uh, another one, uh, uh, how many CD classrooms has been constructed in Longa Bay County after how many public schools in Longa Bay County that need CD classrooms? Lastly, lastly, uh, uh, have we ever have uh, a municipal board within our main county? If yes, what happened? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Walter Pio. I'm the speaker of the main county and the board. Uh, I have had talking of uh, those workers and how they want to own the process by which we do. <coughs> we have a problem here, which I am aware, if you have said that, I'm also aware that we have a group of well-organized, I cannot call them youths, a group organized called, group called Gangbagas. How will you control this? Because they are even controlling the government itself by going into all the departments, what are there many, uh, health there are so many, and we have had problems as the civil society movement. They are beating us up. How will you control this when you go in? Last week. <coughs> so you're something born out. <laughs> we, we, we take the money because uh, the, 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 the two governors for the race that have been, we have been here is for the two classes. I've just seen you first. How will you manage within the few days to get in as the government? Because when you are going around here, there is a uh, to get that <coughs> 300 million. But when you go to the gate at the hospital, it's 137 million. See the difference. How do you control this? I've counted uh, down some changes. Uh, thank you, I'm uh, the chair of uh, I'm Joint Punga, the chair of uh, Fish Farmers in Mwambe. And uh, I, want, I want you to explain to us how you are going to address the issue of food security. Now that you are uh, <coughs> talking about being against the issue of pet farming, and we know the blue economy is one of the resources we have around here, and we have seen how pet farming has been over the county in terms of issues of fish, fish prices, the cost of fish. How are you going to address the issue of food security? And can you actually explain to us why you are seriously against the fish? Thank you so much. I'm Chin uh, Secretary General of the Civil Society of the National Center for the Human Rights. We thank you so much for your honor our first call and honor in this one as well. As Lucky said. My question is, if you are giving your tenure, God willing, if you don't govern, how will you maintain climate change in all sectors? And two, how can Kumabe be sustainable enough? So, so again, I will never 
how will you be able to mainstream climate change in one sector? Two is we need sustainability in all of the country. How will you ensure that farmers do not come to uh, uh, have projects that they own fund? Can we own for fund, especially from the county government? Is there a need for that? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Prabhupada. My name is Abdullah Mondi from the Democratic County CSO Network, and we thank you a lot for having for this. I have a kind of funny question. Politics is a two sided coin, and looking even at the prediction of the law. My question to you is uh, you have a very clear mind, a very good manifesto for this county. What if you are not elected to be the governor of Omobi County. How will the manifestos you have enter into the incoming government? What is the why, what, what is the level of connection between you and the national presidential candidates, the two of them who are the, the front racers, and the whoever comes in as a governor, if just in case it is not you, but the way it becomes you. Thank you, um, Kennedy. I have two questions. So one is that Coma Bay County has been run down by executive fiat. You, for, in your statements, relied on executive orders, some of which are not in consonant with the legal regimes that we have. Do you think that? that will affect operations within the county government? How, how are you going to be different from what has been going on in Omobi? Two, uh, I am looking at the wall and the polls, what 64 plus 43 plus 7 is not 100. I don't know what they are doing. But uh, that as such, uh, let me go to the question of you that you have asserted in your opening remark that popularity is not an issue. Yet we know that according to the election system, it is only a winner through the ballot that becomes who we want him or her to be. Then if that is your assertion, as you made it, then how sure are you going, are you <coughs> thinking that you are going to be the governor? Yet you have that you don't you have accepted that you don't have that popularity. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Yes, uh, thank, you. <clears throat> thank you very much for, for being in the hotel. Uh, you know, if I were to take the last one, if it was about popularity that makes things work, uh, a lot of people know that Tom White changed the world, but he never became president. So for me, even coming here to engage with you and share ideas, I'm changing my mindset. I'm making people know that there are people out there who will do things in a certain way that might not be seen to be conforming to what we are not always. So that is uh, something that is there. But let me take it uh, from up and down. Um, on my sister issue, uh, issues to do with the, the lake as a source. Uh, the lake is a resource, but the lake can be a curse to us. Particularly when people from outside this region with resources and connection to the local government take over the changing business. Maybe I can refresh what I was thinking. Let us have the locals control the fish industry, caging or not caging. That would be my position. Because the moment we allow only certain class of people to do the caging, then you as the chair of the landing beach or the, or the people down there, then you are going to be a worker. You are not going to be a fisherman. To me, 
I feel that the caging business is robbing us of our learning beaches, and the caging business is being run by commercial <coughs> persons who have connections and resources. I would want to see that done by local people. So let me revise my statement, because this is a, an engagement. You've convinced me a little bit that it improves fish farming. That is actually fish farming, but how can we have it done by local people? One of the problems that people have, uh, particularly the water transport, you know what has happened between us and our neighbors. If uh, we are good people, we need to actually send delegations. And I know my worthy competitor has once had a delegation to be able to negotiate with the neighboring countries to stop harassing our fishermen, make sure that they have the right gears, give them protection in the high waters, and improve that problem. To me, that is what I prefer, because it's sustainable. It's sustainable. Uh, on the amount allocated, you talked uh, 2022, 2023. Um, let me tell you, Oba will not get between 7 to 8 million in the year. But depending on, because we have to mark up on our local resources, and uh, that has never changed. So for this, for the, for the first financial year, it's on record. For this particular financial year, it's also already on record. That's the amount, it's rate is there. I might not take it out exactly on the, the amount, but that is where it's rate is. Uh, public schools, and uh, what is what's already there, I might not have the statistics. But I'd like to tell you that up to 70%, when I was talking to my staff this morning, and we were reviewing issues to do with the EC. We only done 30%, 30% of the figure that we are supposed to be doing, not done. So we are still very far from where we should be. For public schools, you know, public schools are not necessarily in our but those that are already embedded, uh, the ECB is only 9%. That is quite very low. The politics on uh, Omar Bay Municipal Board. There was infiltration. There was also big harm of the government. I know that. I told you that I'm a simple man. I like the processes to take care of themselves and avoid unnecessary interferences on local authorities. Uh, the sub county uh, administrators and uh, particularly for Homer Bay, what happened was unfortunate. But for me, it's hands-on. It's hands-on. It's not something that I would like to, 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 to really interfere with when it's done. Okay, let me, uh, let me, let me talk to um, the speaker. The speaker said, guns, guns are fed by politicians. So again, hands-on. If you don't give them the resources, then the guns will disintegrate. But some of these youths are into these guns and extorting purely because they don't have proper engagement. We talked earlier that we will re-engage the youth, we will be able to do a meaningful, uh, uh, a passive uh, placement for young people so that they can be able to move out of that. Guns supported, guns uh, ready, guns stopping staff from uh, going to the offices, that's a matter of breach of the law, and to me, I don't defend that one. Don't it's unfortunate that it did happen. On food security, I think this is again the fish caging thing has come back. I think I've explained myself that I want that to be local driven. Be local driven. Uh, climate change, Madame the deal is done at the same time. So that is where we need to start. We would like to see how we can have that deal uh, set aside and then we can be able to move, to, to move on. On co-funding, you know very well government and the civil society cannot co-fund. What we want to do is start shifting so that we have a uh, government play facilitative role and CSOs also doing their role. You remember when Elizabeth Glaser Foundation came to pay for nurses here, you know what happened. There were two payrolls. 
So I'm very keen that that does not happen again. Uh, All right. Um, I, I, I have only two. If I'm not elected, you see, I'm engaging. I might not be elected today, but I'll be elected another day. But wait until A. You know, wait until A. I see where I'll be. I also publish journals. I teach at the university. I'll push these agendas of mine in public forums. I'm still here. Uh, until I reach 77, I will be here for another 17 years. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Abote. I, I would like to go to, um, to, to Slido. There is one question on vocational training, and uh, that is on your screen there. Um, one issue that uh, is being raised uh, ra 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 up is equipping the VTCs with the relevant tools and equipment, <coughs> employment of more instructors for quality training, and that is uh, an instructor, an instructor who should uh, only handle one class. Uh, the special world bursary and grant needs for materials, MCS tackling enrollment for VTCs, and uh, they are noting, for example, other counties give an amount for bursary for trainees, which is automatic and is decided at the assembly. So you can respond to that. But also VCT? VCT. VTC is the professional training college. Yeah, if, if you go to, right now, there's nearly, in every support there's a professional training center. Most of them are not even in my own country, two are not in our hands, because they are not being resourced. This is an intergovernmental issue with the national government, because that's where the ministry lies. So, it is important that for our position, we should be able to get gain upwards, and then that will be okay. If they can be resourced, uh, well and good. But I think also quantity is a problem. Maybe we need to pick out an aisle and make sure that we can build in tires so that we have the first two or three that are actually functioning, well resourced, and so on, then we move them like that. Because uh, in other counties, what I've seen them doing is upgrade one into maybe a national polytechnic, and then the others kind of fall. Then they have back for students in that country. That's what has happened in PC. Then the others they can be so that we have the generation of the um, I think that's it. That, that right. address it. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Abudu, there's one uh, area that we have not tackled that is also very important. Corruption. How do you intend to deal with corruption if elected in office? And uh, what mechanisms will you put in place to ensure transparency and accountability? in service delivery during your tenure? I wanted to aspect one. I told you that uh, I'll, I'll declare my work uh, as, as soon as I'm sworn in. Uh, what Why have you done so till now? Uh, you see, because uh, the public order does not demand of me at this point. At and as soon as you become a public uh, figure, a public uh, servant, then you need to declare your work. Uh, so, and that will follow with the MI entire exactly. Anything that I own is known. So that way, it's easier for us to be able to take corruption as we come our mind. But the issue of uh, transparency, again, if we do proper public participation, we eliminate official corruption, where we budget corruption. We budget the money that we are going to give the kickbacks and so on. Then we eliminate it immediately. Integrity starts early, and that is my DNA. Thank you very much, Mr. Abodi. And uh, I would like to give you two minutes to have a final word as you give your closing remarks. Our county is the county of Tomboy. The man who sacrificed to tithes sexual member number number 10 of 1965, the paper that was used by the Asian Tigers to be able to develop. So we deserve better management, the better leadership. This is the country of the Amumbari, the man who wrote revolution. Please, revolution should be back from again. This is the, also the region where we have 
the demands of democracy. Please allow democracy to prevail. I will not want to be labeled because of my time. This is democracy. I should have space to be able to propagate my party's issues locally here. And I appreciate you for listening to me and accepting. On A, please, those who are listening to me out there, those who are here, vote wisely and vote for Martha Gumi for change. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this debate today, this uh, 29th day of uh, July. I hope that uh, you've managed to get what you get, and through this program you can be able to determine the kind of a leader you will elect as the next governor for Omade County. I want to say thank you to Mr. Mark Rabuti. Thank you so much for engaging with us, and I'll say this thank you to my panelists. As I hand over this platform to Ken Agutu to give a closing remarks. Let's give him one of applause. The root of all goodness lies in the soil of appreciation. That was a quote by the Dalai Lama. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to Number one, thank you, Mr. Abudi. It's been a pleasure hosting you this morning. To all the participants who've been here, the ones that have asked the questions, I'd like to appreciate just your calmness and keeping this orderly. To Kara and the sponsors, it's been a real pleasure engaging you in Hobby and so thank you very much. I'd just like to thank the hotel also, Cold Springs, for <coughs> allowing us to use this facility. I know it's not always easy allowing political functions in uh, these facilities, but as you can see, everything has been very orderly. I'd just like to also thank the candidates that didn't come up, maybe in that we've learned something. And these proceedings, as was said by Henry earlier, will be shared, and especially with whoever wins, if it is not you, Mr. Rabudi, we will still be able to share it with uh, whoever uh, forms the next government, because it's really important that the views of the residents and stakeholders of Roma Bay County are taken into account as we set the next uh, sit for the next five years. Just one thing that I noticed we didn't talk about, but it's something that you need to think of and we all need to think of is we've got our targets. We've told Mr. Rabudi and the other candidates what we want as Homa Bay residents. But how are we going to monitor that? How are they going to account for us? Those in management know about smart targets. We talk about this all the time. They become something like a cliche. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and relevant, and time-bound. But I'd like us to add an ER to the end to make them smarter. Let's sit down periodically and evaluate what we've set them out to do. And if necessary, let us review. Because unless we do that, then we are quiet, we don't have a voice for five years, and we come back here crying. <coughs> but thank you very much. And with that, Henry, you have something to say? Yes. Yeah. Can I ask the CEO to come? And uh, thank you for attending, and have a good afternoon. Yes. Uh, good morning once again. Now, uh, I think you've come to the close of this, and I want to thank all of you for being here, for creating us to become part of this conversation, and also staying up to this particular day. Like I said from the beginning, uh, this is intended to give you a voice and to give you an opportunity to be able to voice your issues and priorities. We've taken note of every issue that has been raised here, and we certainly are going to share with you what the matrix is, what the priorities are, 
but most importantly, use that to engage the candidate who shall have been elected so that we can be able to call them accountable and make sure that their plan is resonating with what you, as a uh, Omape resident, uh, expect and has a priority. So, thank you very much for being here, and uh, we look forward to continuing engaging with you in other platforms as we go along. So, Ram, then we can close with you. Let's appreciate Mr. Henry Chin. The CEO of Kara. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, it is without further ado that uh, I see your hand is raised. <coughs> Mr. Ravodia said one. Uh, he has said one, one. One good thing here. I don't know if I if I give you the mind to say it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Let me, let, let me say something. Just on a light note. Just on a light note, Mr. Rabu. I will tell you. I will command it. Who won't have a number? You don't have a number. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all our online viewers who have been uh, uh, with us. Following this conversation, thank you so much from wherever you have been watching us from. I'm getting uh, also my own personal notes. People who are watching from different parts of the country this particular debate. Thank you so much to our online viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate those who are watching us online. Now we've come to the end of this forum and uh, I wanted to give one big round of applause to the organizers the participants, yourselves, those who are uh, uh, online, but appreciate them all. Now, um, thank you so much. I have been your moderator. My name is Ram Aguko. Thank you so much, people of Omabe County. I know that you are going to elect somebody that is going to take this county to the next level. It is uh, my prayer that Omabe becomes on top in the next four years. I'm not saying five. Four years. So that we don't see somebody coming up with a final stretch. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for participating on Slido. Keep voting. He said number three is not that bad. Yeah. He loves it. It is still something that can give you a medal. Winning is a good thing. Winning is a good thing. Keep participating with us. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, maybe we can all arise as we join in the national anthem. <laughs> And we can live at our own pleasure. I almost forgot one very important thing. We have refreshments. So, yeah. So if you uh, feel like taking something, munching something, as you remember the debate of today, and uh, you don't think about everything that we've discussed today, Head over back there, we've got some refreshments for you. Those who are watching us online, <coughs> let's join in the national anthem. <coughs>